Hello, welcome to discussion seven, which also so happens to be our last discussion as Team H. I don't know if we'll remain Team H and then argue with each other too, or nonetheless, let's make it a good one. Um, I'm in good spirits. So just to kind of review, we've all been conducting a little bit of background research on the concept of government versus religion um, and how those two entities tie into one another as a whole. Um, and we're just gonna kind of cover some of those key ideas, how do they conflict, how do they go together, how should they go together. Um, with that being said, you know, we always try to abide by the same norms. Um, obviously, no speaking over one another unless we have another interjection to make that would benefit the other's point or introduces a contradiction that realizes a fallacy. So with that being said, does anybody have a, a starting question they'd like to jump off with? Me. All right. Me, me, me. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So the question is, how does the government define religion? So how do you guys think the government defines religion? Okay, so not like just society, like this, the government in particular. Yeah. Okay. So that was actually one of my research questions too. Nice. <laughs> so I found this thing from Legal Dictionary, not the free dictionary. And <laughs> it basically said that the sort of creep about this, how the Supreme Court views it. And it says the Supreme Court has interpreted, in, interpreted religion to mean a sincere and meaningful belief that occupies in the life of its possessor a place parallel to a place held by God in the lives of other persons. Okay. So do you think you could maybe give us like a little paraphrased version of that just to kind of so from what I understand, I believe it's just saying that like religion is something that it's a meaningful belief that people put into as a god, like everyone has mm -hmm. different gods. So it's, it's a place that they hold in their lives of a meaningful place of a god, basically. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, did it, was everybody able to, that makes sense to everybody? Yes, um, my source has a somewhat different type of thought on it, but at the same time, this was more earlier on when they were starting to actually be more diversity in religion. So uh, my source is called iep.utm.edu. It's an acronym for Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a pre-reviewed academic resource. And so this is in section. So the section this belongs in is actually establishment and separation. Nope, that's the wrong one. Apologies. That's the first section. No worries. No worries. This section actually goes with, um, well, it goes with the section of toleration, accommodation of religious belief and practice. So with the growing plur plurality of religious belief, communities and institutions in the early modern era, one social problem that they had was determining, determining whether to what extent they should be tolerated, which sort of gives their opinion on, they're not sure how to sort of approach all the different ones. Okay. That's a really interesting, I, well, first of all, am I cutting you off? No. Okay. That's a really interesting point that you bring up because that kind of goes in with some of the things that I looked at. So you're essentially saying this resource says that the Supreme Court or the government as an entity is like, there's there's so many of them, we don't know how to deal with them basically, right? Mm -hmm. It's not exactly geared towards government. It was more towards the communities and institutions that ran over that state or, s that state or city. Okay. So not super government related, which it may stray a little bit from the question, but this was also what was sort of inside of that philosophy of what they believed and what they thought of religion. No, yeah, and still a position of authority. Okay, um, which is really good point because it ties into, I remember Ms. Hamby and Ms. Gillardy providing us with um, that one link to the website that boiled down Thomas Jefferson's, I can't remember if it was a letter or pamphlet, but essentially he's like talking about the fact that, you know, we should be able to follow whichever religion we identify with and, you know, where we place our beliefs. Um, so I feel that kind of ties into your definition. Um, you know, these positions of power, they're like, we don't know how to view 
all these different religions. Well, Thomas Jefferson came out with this solution. They're like, just don't infringe on people's rights. Just let them um, kind of follow along with what they feel is correct, uh, which. Yeah. And another but, person, sorry, I cut you no, off you're, a little bit. You're, you're, you're another good. person, Locke, he sort of did something similar. And for whether and with Ms. Gallardi and Ms. Hamby, it, I believe it was a letter, a letter that Jefferson okay. sent. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And then the pers this person's named Locke, and he argued that it's this is extremely heavily sort of kind of paraphrased. Okay. Or at least I try to make it as paraphrased as possible, but still understandable. So his he had three main points, which was it's futile to attempt to co coerce belief because it does not fall to to the will to accept or reject. Proportion propositions it is wrong to restrict religious practice so long as it does not interfere with the rights of others mm -hmm. allowing a wide range of religious groups will likely prevent any one of them from becoming so powerful as to threaten the peace yes so that's john locke right you said Locke, john locke i, I believe awesome. so okay very famous philosopher so unless anybody other else has some insights i did want to take that as an opportunity to transition in this question which is you know, you said in specific that Locke had stated, as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others, which is kind of important. You know, you want to make sure that your religious following isn't becoming too powerful. So then why do you guys think, or maybe through your research, you might have found an answer to this, that so many people at the time, I mean, obviously we're talking 17th century, 18th century um, world. Why were so many people opposed to this idea of religious freedom? You know, maybe where, where might that have come from? Is, do you guys have any insights? Can't can you repeat it? My uh, Zoom froze for a second. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm just saying, like, why do so many people in the past, 17th century, 18th century, around these these guys' time, um, feel that it was it was wrong, almost, to allow people to follow what they felt was right? Why do you guys think that was? Um, I will be honest. I do not have a source for this, but I do have an opinion type okay. of thing. I have no source to prove this, but I do remember from our very brief uh, history on Greeks and Christ Christianity about what happened there with the Christians trying to change the way the Greeks thought with their into their religion, into Christianity. You, if you guys remember that. And then it sort of went from, I this is a genuine I believe type of thing. Like, I do not know if this is real or if this has happened or if this is what ha how it was documented. But I believe the, they started to develop the thinking of let's turn everybody to Christianity because Christianity is the main religion because they've done it before. They did it with, uh, with the Greeks who believed in multiple gods while they only believed in one main one who was the one who ruled over everything, the Christian God. While the, the Greeks believed in multiple such as Zeus, Athena, and so on. My apologies, the rest escaped my mind currently which caused sort of like a clash between the two until the point where there was more Christians and the Greeks had to slowly stop worshiping their gods because they were starting to get scared of actually being, it wasn't exactly prosecuted, but I think it would be some more, more along the lines of uh, heavily assaulted and harmed with stoning and such because they did not believe in the Christian God. So I suppose they would adopt that type of mindset because that's what they've done before and that's what happened before. And they could, they essentially, using Locke's word, they offend, they essentially, I believe I'm using this correctly, do correct me if I'm wrong. They eventually co coerced them into believing Christianity more than they would ever believe their own, if that makes sort of some sense. Yeah. And they, that happened kind of with the Roman Empire too, didn't it? Yes. Same kind of process. Yes. So, yeah, from what she basically said, I kind of agree, but also, like, I'll break it down. Like, it's obviously opinion, but basically people like to be in control. Mm -hmm. And so, and people like to believe that they're right. So when you put those two things together, people are going to try and control others' religions to because they believe their religion is right. Which to them, it's right, but not to others everyone's religion is right for them basically yeah but since those people want to control it so much that's where that comes into yeah, yes and... um 
sorry, Robert, you go. No, you're good. I was just going to agree with Cherokee, you know, like everybody's subjective uh, yes. opinion. Um, and then uh, this is from the same source. This section though is establishment and separation of church and state. So uh, there was this uh, political institutions, I believe. No, that's not it. It was liberal tradition. It has usually, it usually or generally opposed establishment, which is essentially making uh, a religion an establishment, sort of like, I don't really know how to explain this part, but there was two different ones. There was contemporary liberals who typically appeal to the value of fairness, and then liberals who often argue that fairness precludes devoting tax revenues and religious to religious groups as it forces non-believers to subside, which sort of goes against what Locke was talking about and what we're trying to say. And well, subsides against the religions that they reject. Okay. So I think that sort of ties into what Cherokee was talking about. Do correct me if I'm wrong, please. You're, you're good. That seemed pretty accurate. Um, I have some thoughts, but I did want to, Anna, I just wanted to open it up to you real quick. Did you have any thoughts on this part mm, of what we're discussing? Well, I just wanted, okay. I did want to disagree with maybe <laughs> a bit um, because I do know that Christianity technically was originally came, came from parts of um, Middle East, so like Israel. I don't know if you guys heard, but, but that's also where God was um, raised too. And religion is actually like from the Catholic. So like, it's, I don't think it's very like the same thing it's really different. I don't know. That's that's my opinion. Like I don't completely agree with maybe on. I, my apologies, Anna. I I will also be honest. I get cat Catholic cat Catholic and um Christianity mixed up because when I was younger, I was a part of both, and I was also a part of my own religion, which is many people say it's not a religion, but it genuinely is shamanism. So it's like being between all three, you're gonna get some of them mixed up. I apologize if I did. Thank you for telling me though. Oh no, you're good. Don't worry. That's that's just my opinion. I thought that's all I wanted to say. But yes, I do agree with what Cherokee was saying earlier. People just wanna take control. Yes. Sorry, they, they wanna have that power, I guess, in a way. Because when you take control of things like you want to have that power over your hands. And yeah. So and also the, the question that I answered earlier, I also got the, the same website that's Cherokee did, <laughs> so I wasn't able to say much, but yeah, that's all. No, you're good. Thank you for making that connection too, though. I mean, it's, it's good to highlight, you know, when we are sharing resources, we're on a little bit of a common ground there. However, I am seeing a pattern with a lot of these, um, these factoids and these excerpts is that you have somebody that believes they're right, and they're trying to enforce that on everybody else, on the subjects, on the citizens, society. But like, that's kind of what we're trying to tackle here too, isn't it? Is that we want to separate um, religion as a, as, as, a, as a following from the powers of government, right? And that's what we're seeing so far, especially with, uh, mainly with your example of the, uh, the coercion of the following Christianity on the Greek individuals in past. Hey, what's up real quick? I'm, I'm doing something for school real quick. Can I come in there in a little while? Okay. Um, sorry about that, but hearkening back to what you were saying, Maylee, about how the coercion of the Greek citizens to follow Christianity, that was probably part of the government, you know what I mean? This foreign government comes in and they're like, you got to follow this religion. This is the, the religion of our nation, you know what I mean? Which kind of seems wrong almost. And it definitely led to the formation of the establishment clause. Uh, let me make sure I'm quoting this correctly. So I'm, re I'm referencing MTS at u.edu um the first amendment encyclopedia and essentially this establishment cause is it's it was developed a lot over time and the interpretation didn't come around until i believe it was the 1920s or the 1940s i can't find the exact section that describes it but it wasn't until the 20th century where we're like oh oh it's right here it was not until after world war ii that the court interpreted the meaning of the establishment clause. But um, it's interesting to think about because now we actually have this ruling, which is like, you can't enforce religion because that violates, you know, 
others' individual rights to express their own religious beliefs and such. So you have to separate the government and the religion as a whole. But then how do they work together? You know what I mean? Like that's that perspective. Okay, they need to be separate. You can't have too much power. So how do we, where's that balance at? Does, does anybody have anything to kind of transition with that? Okay, I don't know if, if what I'm gonna say has to do with what you just said earlier, Robert. I'm sorry if it does not send it, it has nothing to do with what you just no, said and earlier. If it doesn't, you're fine too. Like I wanna hear what, what you have to but say. But I think personally, um the government does not really um give us I guess does not give any freedom when it comes to religion. Um mostly we want to express it or like um worship, you know, just have the freedom to express a religion. Um we're really, I guess, limited in a way because, like I said, they they just don't give us a religion of freedom. Um, in some sense, that we do want to practice our religion since everybody has different beliefs. Sometimes um, people can judge us or in a way, or the government will do something to try to stop it in a way. I don't know. Um, and in a way, it's more like it's it's like a dictatorship government in a way, even though we don't see it. But it's, I, I think it's very, it's going to be very hard to find a solution on that because like I said, we're, we're, there's no freedom to really, when it comes to express um, and kind of show our, our own beliefs and different beliefs to society or to people because we're, you know, we're just kind of control or we're limited to do it. So it, it kind of seems more like a dictatorship, dictatorship government. Yeah, I don't. That's that's just my opinion. I don't know if anybody agrees on that. I I want to say that I agree and disagree on both sides a little bit. So I I see where you're coming from, and I definitely agree that like if you if you're enforcing like one religion, like what else is going to be enforced, and what other freedoms are you getting rid of? And that I like that word dictatorship. You know, that kind of leads to that that dictatorship, that tyrannical government. You know what I mean? That's just oppressive to its citizens, but. I do disagree, especially with like our modern form of government. Yes, I feel there's religious prejudice in our nation um, and certain religions are favored over others. But I would like to believe that because of the way that our laws are written, we have the ability to express which religion we want to follow. Would you agree with me there? Mm, yes. Okay. But yeah, that's, I think that's all that. Yeah, that yeah I and actually, I should probably be more specific. No, um, you're, you're good. But I'm going to think of any. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I'm glad um, to hear your opinion, Robert. And, and I'm happy to hear yours as well. I'm wondering what Maylee and Sherry could think. Yeah, what do you guys think? So I kind of actually like, well, like, I know the First Amendment, it actually says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So we do kind of have like that as a law, like it's in our first amendments that we follow. But other than that, like, I don't really know what else. <laughs> yeah. Love the reference of the original text though. Good way to, to summarize it. Uh, Maylee, what are your thoughts on that? I, I agree with, I agree with Cherokee there because with the First Amendment having the, sadly I do not have as good as a memory as Cherokee, but with the law of not being able to make a law about religion, sorry, that's, <laughs> oh, we get you. Like, or trying to stop the freedom of to express the religion, we have that gap there. So therefore, if someone were to try to oppress, this is again, opinion, please, opinion. Okay. <laughs> try to oppress that religion, we could easily state that part of the, amendment of where they cannot exactly oppress us because we have the freedom to express our religion they cannot force another religion on us unless they would be okay with us forcing our religion back on them in that case then please go ahead but be warned we will also try and force ours on you because that is what you are doing to us mm -hmm. sort of like an equal exchange thing that's kind of almost exactly what jefferson had stated too is that he said that this this thing, this establishment clause, this early form of it, that separation is 
it's something you can remove from law, but if you do, it's a risky situation. So I like that you brought that up because then it's like, you know, people are going to try to force things on us. Yes. And then for opinion, once again, for those, like if the, if the law wasn't there and um, people were trying to expand their religion to people who are unwilling, those who are unwilling, if they really do enjoy their religion and so on, they can easily force back and say something similar to, if you're trying to force said religion onto me, then I will force my said religion onto you. Because it'd be sort of like an equal exchange. You're trying to take something from me. Okay, then I'll try and take something from you as well. Because there's no line, there's no border to help or to stop to make someone understand that you do you, I do me. We can get along, but do not force me to do something I will not enjoy. Yes. Especially when it's more towards that person's center of self, because that's genuinely what a religion is. It's like a center of self when you think about it, because some people, they follow the morals and um, morals and lessons of a religion, while others, they take what the, that lesson that their religion gives and their culture gives to, ooh, my phone just fell. Ooh. Never mind. That was my switch. Apologies. You may have to get that part out. But that part of their religion, essentially, where, wherever, whatever religion they believe in, eventually either helps them form themselves, or if they don't have a religion, what they see, what they hear, what they do is what helps them form their center of self. So yeah. if you try and take that center of self away, they're easily going to try and take your center of self away because that's what you're trying to take from them. That's just sort of the way I see it. No, it's, it's very like insightful. It's give, give take. It's like a yeah. give take relationship. The only thing you're doing is taking then that other person is just going to keep taking as well because you're not giving anything back. No, that's really insightful. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it stretches beyond religion too. Like with anything, like you said, you know, the person's center of self based on their experiences, everybody's different. Everybody's going to have different perspectives on the world. So we have to have those protections in place. So I'm really glad you brought that up, Mealy. Um Yes, you're welcome. So Cherokee, I, I remember us talking in class a little bit and you had referenced uh, one of the sources you were poking around just a little bit, which made kind of an interesting claim. And I think you might know where I'm going with this about the, the married couple kind of analogy. And I yeah. just kind of wanted to know, like, what, what did you interpret from that? So I didn't actually take that source into my notes, okay. but it was kind of basically saying that like religion and government are kind of like a married couple, except like they don't, work together like they don't like to be around each other all the time but they still kind of stay together I, i'm gonna try and find it and then i'll come back to it let me okay. see if i can find it real quick yeah no worries no worries uh, my source kind of sort of states something with um about religion and uh political like being in religion and political things okay sort of mixing together so this is what they said from the perspective of many religious people themselves there are worries that a political role for their religion may well corrupt their faith community and its mission instead of focusing more on towards what they're trying to do it may focus more on the political part of it if they were to sort of conjoin without certain lines if, if that's understandable so it kind of creates that chaos if they just meld together is that kind of what you're saying yeah that's sort of what the, the source was saying With, that's, yeah because if they do one thing they have to adjust a whole bunch of other things for it to fit correctly it's like if you make a glass slipper you have to make sure it's the same size as the person's foot a, a weird analogy but it's what came to me that, that makes sense um and then obviously I still want to give Cherokee the opportunity to present that, but just building off of what you had said right there. Um, it just, it's interesting because there was a lot of comparisons made in the original documentation that a lot of these philosophers had wrote about um, and early political leaders that they're like, we want to separate these two partly because the government might corrupt the religion versus you know religion taking control of the government which I thought was kind of interesting. And I, I felt like that might have tied in a little bit what you, what you had said there. If you meld them together, yes. it's, it's chaotic. And then another part of, part of it is going off of what you said. Um, it's, it's from, my apologies. I'm going to be in awkward silence for like a couple more seconds. No worries. Okay. 
There it is. Uh, this is what somebody thought in the source. I did not put their name in, sadly, but what they thought was that um, democratic societies rejecting the influence of an established church at their peril as they cut themselves off from the kind of ethical wisdom that can come only from a participation in tradition. And he argued as a result, society would degrade into tyranny and or social and cultural fragmentation. So those are the, that's the aftermath, basically, if you allow these two entities to come together. Okay. That's what he thought would happen if you don't allow them to, to uh, learn off of each other. Hmm. Okay. type of thing okay. yeah okay and then i found the article awesome so it's church of jesus christ.org <laughs> um so it says religion and government are like a couple who sometimes have a hard time living together but who find they simply cannot live apart and then it says religion and government both need their independence in order to flourish but history has shown that a complete divorce is healthy for neither. They travel, travel different, but parallel tracks. So like, even though they're different, they're kind of on the same track. They are most successful and most effective when they protect and encourage one another. So I think that's a really important part to point out. Yes, that, that is important. And then it goes to mention that, like, government plays an essential role in protecting and, maintain, and maintain, maintaining religious freedoms. Mm. Let me see if there's anything else important. But, yeah, I think it's really cool that it, like, compared them to a couple. Because even though they're two separate things, they both can, like, rely on one of one each other. Basically. It's a really, really good analogy there. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, yeah, it definitely grounds it a little bit, makes it easier to kind of think about. Um, which just throughout the course of the discussion, I've been kind of pondering over this is I can see how religion needs government because you need to protect religious freedoms. And that's how, that's where the government comes into play as policymakers. However, I don't, and this could just be my own subjective opinion as an individual who is agnostic and who cannot pertain to any particular religion, but just up to your own interpretation, you guys, what do you, what do you think some of the benefits that religion has on government might be like as a concept? Like, how do you think that having, you know, these two connected, like, where do you think religion comes into play and benefits government? Just open in interpretation. Well, okay, so um, this is just pure theoretical and also completely opinion-based. So uh, let's say someone in the government has been in some religion, any religion. And so they base some beliefs they have off of said religion. And the beliefs in said, belief, said religion is mainly around, let's say, let's say it's around the fact of something around like, being truthful when you can and staying positive and abiding laws and making sure that everyone is in a safe place type of thing. That would obviously affect how they would think and how they would run their work. And if not a person inside the government and outside of the government, it would, you could say it would give the government an opinion to go off of for what their people needs, what all their different kinds of people needs from the minorities to the, mi to the majorities. Of from what does this person have from this religion? What do they need? What do what what rights do they need to have? What rights do we already have in place that can help them? And then from the majorities too, what do we already have covered for all of them? Type of thing, so that they know what they're doing. It's just sort of how I think of it. A really okay, good way to think of it. Yeah, and then this article, the same one, Church of Jesus Christ.org, also talks about it. It kind of just says that. Um, religion is still an essential role in government. The only real solutions to many of the serious problems facing our world today are spiritual and not political or economic. 
For example, racism, violence, and hate crimes are spiritual problems, and their only real solution is spiritual. I can, which I kind of disagree because the government can fix some of those too, but it yes. also is a um, a moral thing that needs to be fixed, which is a moral slash spiritual thing, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same boat with you, yeah. I, I agree with that. And I would say, I, well, my family would probably re relate a little more towards the hate crimes for what's like what's been going on if you because my mom and my dad, they watch news and they pay attention to that stuff. I don't really, only really I know is if I hear them over talking. And lately there's been a lot of hate crimes against anyone who is either Asian or remotely looks Asian. So it's sort of like, it gets scary and it gets extremely wondering at times. Like, okay, let's go to the store. We can't go to the store too late. And then it's a, if there, is there enough people at the store at this time for us to be safe type of thing. And now when my mom and dad go to the store, there has to be two people, mom, mom and dad always have to go together now just to be safe because there's two, no longer one. So I sort of understand that. And at the same time, while I think it's spiritual, it could also be towards something the government can actually sort of work to fix as well. Yeah. Because so, hate crimes don't just come from the spiritual aspect. It comes from what's being done and why is it happening? as well with all the other things, such as racism. It can be also be figured out with the, why is this happening? Who caused it? Not exactly a who, but more of a what, sorry. More of a what caused this? And how, how can we fix it? Although if we're always focused on those, eventually everything else will fail. So I would say we'd have to give it time, a whole lot of time. So I get um, what the article is saying the way I'm taking it. Yeah. Um, even though the government can put in these laws and try to stop these it's all going to come down to the people themselves and their moral values the people that are attacking these asian it's coming down to them as why are they attacking them well their moral values aren't in the right spot um i okay i agree with what turkey said um right now but i do disagree because i don't think what the first part that you said Cherokee, I don't think is really the I don't think the government can do much about it because I think it's spiritually it is come it does come down to the people um the things that we do as humans whether we attack somebody whether we kill somebody whether we abuse somebody anything like that um it is it comes from from us and it's spiritually um, I don't want to get religious, but it's like spiritually, you can have bad things in you that is causing you spiritually this thing that is causing you to do these bad things to other people. I don't think really the government can do much about it because at the end of the day, it's up to us. It really just comes down to us. Um, like I said, I don't think the government tells people, you know, encourages them like, go ahead and like hit somebody, go ahead and like. By, go ahead and attack the Asian people. Go ahead and attack the Mexican people. Go ahead and attack the African American people. Go ahead. I don't think the government tells us that, but I think it's just rather spiritually us that we have the bad in us. Um, we may have the good in us, but there is some people we just have, are just spiritually have really bad heart and just you know just bad things inside of them. So I don't think it's the government. I just think it's spiritually. It comes down to us. That's what we have to take and take that in fact that is is it's not the government telling us do it. It's just us. It's take it comes down to us. Mm -hmm. That's yes. just my opinion. I yeah, I so I sort of agree with that. It's more of a spiritual thing and then even if the government can try, there's no guarantee that they will listen. Because it's more of on the what what they want to do, what they believe, and if they are mentally running it through their head of what they're going to do how will it affect the person they're doing it to and you know like plus i feel like um even if the government tries to sell a person you know like don't attack certain people there's probably just a spiritually spiritually a lot of bad inside of them and like a lot of things that probably we're not like they're mentally not well or who knows but 
like I said, like Maylee was saying, the government cannot stop that even if you tell the person to stop doing it. Because yeah. there's so much bad in this world. And it's like racism, which is a good point. Even if you tell people to stop being racist, spiritually, there's something inside of them that is making them do these things. Which so, is where religion starts to play in with like, because people believe their religion and if hmm. the religion is telling them to be kind to all humans, they're going to start, that's what they're going to believe and that's what their moral values is going to be. So that's why the government still needs religions. Yeah. And I think in a way, I don't think the gov- it, the religion really benefits the government in a way. I think it rather religion benefits some society in a way if that makes sense because a lot of people that are in religion christian catholics they're christians um some of them do say like oh i see a change in my life oh i see something changing in me like i see something good out of good results of positivity i don't think really religion religion benefits in a way in the government i think it's rather just religion helping society and benefit 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 society yeah, like that. Yeah, that's, that's. I agree with you, but at the same time, I disagree a tiny bit with certain parts of it because with the religion helping society, that is also could be counted as religion helping the government because with it helping society, it helps the society understand a little more of what they're what they need and what they want from the government with their eye opening things from or their feelings they get from whatever religion they're in. That's just sort of the way I see it. I think those are a lot of really good, robust perspectives to have on this. Um, and something I'm seeing kind of commonplace here is that, you know, people's values in, in re- relation to their religion can influence how they behave in society. Um, and I, I just, I personally feel that, like Maylee, you had said, individuals in the past, they're going to have a, a religious affiliation, even if they're a member of government. A lot of people are. Um, and that's going to come into a huge effect. Like you said, you know, you need a religion to, to build off of and find these values and these morals to, you know, what is just for our society? And I guess the question becomes, well, where do you get those values from in the first place? Because lots of different religions are going to have lots of different values. And then even for example, I think mainly you had also stated, um, you know, the expression of religious freedom is okay, as long as it doesn't violate the rights of others, which makes sense. But then, you know, what if you have a government that doesn't define the rights of others, you know, similarly to how we do in the United States? Um, And then, you know, different religious affiliations pop up, and they're just chaotic and, and leading to lots of, you know, conflicts and stuff. So it's, a I I really appreciate you guys' perspective on that, because it is kind of a mess. Yes, and then if I may say something, because while there's also religious people, there's also atheists people who don't believe in re- religion. Yes. So what they base everything off of is either logic or what they genuinely see for themselves, which was also how they build up their morals. If they see something that does cause genuine logical harm, they may be, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this. This would be something that would be considered bad or inherently bad. So yeah. There's also those people too. No, you shall not leave them out. They are not yes. forgotten. Don't leave them out. Yes. So I think more of it's like it comes down to the people you're around and how you're raised. So it doesn't have to be just like your moral values aren't just religion based because there's those that aren't. But religion is also a community that helps you be around people that most of the time are going to show you examples of good things like be good examples 